how do you help dogs get more interested in toys so it could be a, it could be a number of things it could be just the style of play so some people will like um persevere with tug like i nearly made that that so that absolute same mistake with jess years ago uh, she kept checking out and all these sorts of things as soon as i changed the style of play and the amount of time she could win within the play things changed and i've transformed it <laughs> There's all sorts of things that can mess around with your play experience. And if you don't have an eye on it, it can just make play something that you just don't do very much at all because you either avoid it because it gets too exciting and don't know what to do with it. So it's a shame because once you can harness play, you can the, the sky's the limit really. And what I'll say is just try and tune in to your own dog and be really present when you play. Think if you're check out at all um, if you've got a fast dog that if your mechanics don't flow so i'll be putting the title go with the flow if they don't flow it feels a bit clunky and then and then you lose connection you can literally take your eye off the dog for two, for a split second and boom they're gone with tug a lot of the time i don't do much of the work i let them do all the work <laughs> and that's why i like these kind of longer handle things because they can do most of the tugging. Oh. I tend not to do all this. Oh. And I I'm doing all the work, which when you've got a 37 kilo, a 35 kilo German Shepherd, this is a whole lot different than an eight kilo Spaniel. So if I'm doing that a lot, it's a lot of work for me. So I'll let them do all the work from playing a little game of tug. You can teach little bits of self-control. Down. Get it. Yeah. Good girl. All through little bits of play. Don't have to be for long either. Just going to change the toy for a second. Let's see what we do with this one. Yeah. Little ball on a little handle. Arr, this is one that we don't uh, play much with and it's really to show you that it's not so much about the toy as such but the style of play so we still like to play like this leave leave okay <laughs> with the same different toy so you can go to a toy shop and pick a gazillion different toys and think oh i can't play with this one often it's the style in which you play as to how and the way you get it to flow <laughs> leave good girl leave you don't have to play all the time but but what i will say is um the more i speak to people the more i'm hearing the same thing where i play at home but i've never thought to play outside when actually it's a great way to get your connection it's just a great way to get connection um and just enjoy doing stuff together without it being anything other than just pure fun no pressure at all just pure fun i'm aware that jess doesn't like competition so i tend not to play when the other one's free and I've also got a little food toy. For those of you that have never used food toys or, th or actually think, hmm, I've played with food toys before and it doesn't work. Honestly, if you know, sorry, if you know and you can learn how to play with a food toy, it, is, it can be a game changer. Um, and uh, this certainly was, this is a tug enough, a tug enough clam, Velcro's shut, open it up, put a bit of food in there, close it, you can throw it, they retrieve it, bring it back for you to put more food in it. Um, I know that if you're ever looking for one of these, tug enough, uh, have them on the website. Because you're a part of the Genius Canine crowd, if you put in the code Genius Canine, you get 10% off. And you can see the difference in the intensity of play, things like that. Hello you, hello, even how more comfortable she is being in close proximity good girly oh good girl 
when there's this type of thing going on. So like totally pressure free, change of body language from me, I go low, crouch down, you ready? But it still means we can interact and play. It's a totally different style. It's not half as intense, but it gives us a chance to stay connected. Yeah, nice. Now I'm feeling there, feel that our attitude was a lot more comfortable that time. So yeah, good girly. And I remember uh, when I very first started um, with the police or like that, they give you this big bite socks. Like it's like, it's like about that. It's about a foot long and it's about that fat. It's nothing. It's not like you could stick it in your pocket or anything like that. It's absolutely awful to play with. And they're like that. Here you are. That's your toy. Uh, play with your dog. <laughs> that was it. That was that was my instruction. Play with your dog. I'm like that. What do you do with that? Oversized sausage. Anyway, <laughs> goes. And you're like, oh, oh, I'll just play tug with my dog. I'll play tug with my dog. Now what? Right, put your dog away. There was nothing in it. But actually, there's quite a lot. You know, I have gone to um, great lengths over the years to really get a feel for it, to get a, to just like get it really good so that it flows and it's connected and it's great energy and we can teach lots of things within it. Um, it's taken time that it's there's a lot there's lots of little skills in there that that um, are the difference. How do you help dogs get more interested in toys? So it could be a, it could be a number of things. It could be just the style of play. So some people will like um, persevere with tug. Like I nearly made that that so that absolute same mistake with Jess years ago. Uh, she kept checking out and all these sorts of things. As soon as I changed the style of play and the amount of time she could win within the play, things changed and I've transformed it. I find the um, more distance between me and, and whatever the thing is, like, you know, so a retrieve is less pressure for them. So the, the love running away, that pressure off, allowing for the proximity to be extended so that they go away a bit and they're like oh this is great they feel free but they're coming back and then they're able to go away again that could be a lot less pressure feeling than um, say tug which is here and, and quite close proximity but you can put long lines on things to take pressure off if you are playing tug um, I think quite often we look for the end end result straight away and actually if, if they're engaging just a little bit that's a win if they're engaged a little bit longer next time that's a win. If it's a little bit more intense next time, but still short, that's an even better win. You know, it's getting better and better all the time. Quite often it's in the style. And, and if we can just like spend a bit of time to learn how to play in a way that they really enjoy it, then it can build a difference. I, I've no pressure to give it to my hand, but you know, if it's something that I want to add in, then I will, but I just want to, I just want to like, enjoy a game. There's no pressure for anything to be right or wrong. If you throw it at me, great. Thank you very much. Let's play again. Way. <laughs> I'm like, let's not take the joy out of the game. I'm like, let's just love it for what it is. We're not doing it for competition here. We're doing it to build connection to just for the pure love of the game and the connection and the two way interaction. There's no, there's no way I would want, unless I'm doing competition and I'm not doing anything for competition here. If, unless I'm doing some sort of competition, I'm looking. I'm not looking for precision of any sort. So if my if I have a dog that will bring something back to me, uh, but happens to drop it at my feet instead of giving it to my hand, I'm like that is a win. You can't complain about that. We well, can if you want, but honestly, really, just play the game, have fun. St let's look at what's going right instead of like what's going wrong. And in my mind, it's not going wrong. So honestly, just love the game, go with the flow. I mean, oh. Let's not take the joy out of life in general. <laughs> we just want to love uh, what we're doing. That's all we're looking to do here. With a brand, brand new dog, if I had a dog today that I'd never met before and I was like seeing if they would play, I'd have them on a long line. So I would never play off lead with them straight away um, just to see what I've got and see what I can work with. Um, so a long line's a good halfway step. My question is what stops a dog from bringing um, toys to hand? I just can't master it. So getting them comfortable like me maybe even nose touching but what I've found with uh, Sola who likes to dig and bury things the famous digger and burier um where I'm getting her to bring it up to me but I'm not taking it and the more I set back the more she wants to bring it to me 
then I'll put a little hand on and then I'll let go and I'm like hold the hand out and I'm like here yeah, have it I don't want it I don't want it go away and then they bring it up it's magic that's what I do I don't have the food play masterclass how do I get it <gasps> go to the geniusk9.com website top menu food play masterclass use because you're in this little we're in you're in the family because <laughs> you're part of the family it's just because it's between us use the code genius vip all capital letters all one word no spaces you get 10 pound off cha-ching